All right, uh, I'm gonna show you in this video how to install a uh, 12 volt socket at the driver's side foot well area. All right, of course, the first thing you gotta do is remove this top grill here. So you gotta pop this out. Just has a bunch of clips. Don't worry about it, just pull straight up and you, you'll be able to pull this out. All right, once you remove that grill, then you gotta remove the frunk area. You just have four bolts here. One, two, three, and four. Those are 10 millimeter, that takes a 10 millimeter socket. Once you take those out, then the frunk just pops right out. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that uh, you need to pop this out right here. Just pull this straight out, pop it out here and pop it out here. There's a clip right there and a clip right there and a clip in the middle. Once you pop those straight out, then you gotta unhook it from the bottom. So you just pull straight up and you're gonna unhook that at the bottom right here. And then you wanna un then you wanna disconnect this uh, this switch right here, which is your trunk your front release switch. You just wanna pull that straight out. So take this connector and pull straight out to the right. All right, once you pull this connector straight out, then you can just set this uh, plate aside. And now you should be able to pull everything out. But, oh, actually, you gotta remove one of the uh, a plastic fastener that's over here by your um, windshield washer reservoir. So take a screwdriver here and pop this out. Once you pop that out, then this fastener just pops out. That's it, pop that out. Once you pop that out, now your frunk should be able to just come straight out. All right, now that you got your frunk out, you're gonna wanna take out your uh, air filter housing. To take this out, you need to remove this bolt, one, and this bolt, two. It's a ten, it takes a 10 millimeter socket to remove those two. Once you take those out, then you can just pull this straight up in the upward direction. Once you pop that out, then you can gain access to your 12 volt battery. All right, so now, now that you pulled out your uh, uh, cabin air filter housing, it exposes the uh, 12 volt battery. This is where you want, this is what you, where you want to get to because you want to hook up your uh, 12 volt positive to the uh, to this area right here this this nut got to remove this nut so you could hook up your uh, 12 volt power to that and what we're gonna do is we're gonna run it from here across uh, most likely towards the back here behind this underneath this air duct underneath that over to the left side of your air intake right here the left side of this this is where we're going to penetrate through the firewall so if you can see that blue um, plug right there that blue plug I have a wire right here going through it right now this is my wire that powers my uh, underglow so I already popped this through that uh, that grommet. So what you want to do is pop this out. Once you pop that out, now you got an access uh, hole to get through your uh, firewall. So again, this this is this won't be on your car. This this wire, this red and black wire. I added that wire when I added my underglow. So we're gonna run our 12 volt power right through that hole to get to the uh, driver's side uh, footwell area. All right, so now you're gonna wanna uh, remove all the panels inside the car. Uh, the center panel uh, by the footwell of the driver's side, you should remove that one. 
it's, it's pretty easy to just unclip it, just pull it straight out. You're gonna see all these clips right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're, they're, they're all plastic clips there. Just pull that straight out. Then you go to the passenger side. Same thing, remove this uh, center console uh, foot well panel. Same thing, take a pry bar, like a plastic one or something like that, just like this. Come in through the top, pry it open, same thing at the bottom, pry it open, and just pull this panel straight out. See, there's, the clip is right there, and it goes inside these, these little slots right here, all the way around. And uh, I've, I've, I've removed mine plenty of times and <laughs> never had any issues. That way, now you can expose your center console. This is where you wanna leave all your wires and stuff like that here in the center console at the bottom. There's plenty of space down here for all of your wiring. So uh, all those are my wires for my uh, ambient lighting on the inside as well as my uh, underglow. It all um, comes over here. All right, so while we're here at the passenger side, by the center console, we need to remove um, the, the uh, panel by the foot, foot well panel, right, right at the bottom here. That way we can, um, we can uh, fish our 12 volt wire from the uh, firewall. So to do that, there are, I believe there's four clips that you need to remove. There's one of them. Same thing, you put a, uh, a screwdriver underneath it and pop it out. Uh, there should be four of them. There's another one right there. And then, oh, actually, there's only three. There's the third one. Take all three of those out, and you should be golden. Let's try that. All right, I was wrong. There were four of them. So after you remove those four plastic clips, now you're gonna have to pry it from the uh, front of this panel because there's a hook way in the back over there. There's a hook that hooks onto this panel. So, uh, and then over here, there's like three or four uh, of those uh, plastic um, uh, uh, snap-on fasteners. So we're gonna pull these uh, from the front. See right there? That's one clip right there. All right. Uh, looks like there was another clip right here at the front, and a third clip right there at the front left side. So once you pull those three clips off, then this you have to pull it towards you. It'll slide out, and then there's. There's where it hooks onto right there. So that right there goes inside of this right here. So later on when you put this back together, you gotta make sure that that, that goes inside there first and then you snap all three of these clips back into place. So now you need some 12 gauge cable. Uh, my estimate is about eight to 10 feet of 12 gauge. So make sure you got 12 gauge stranded. And you're gonna run that through the firewall from the inside. So I already, I already ran my uh, uh, cable there. So I'm just gonna tie it onto there and pull it through the uh, firewall <coughs> all right so you figure out how you're gonna fish your wire I just tied it to my existing wire that's pretty much it right there there's my wire and then I'm probably gonna wa want to uh, 
uh, make this hole a little bit larger on, on the, uh, the this blue uh, plug. That way I can pull it through that blue plug and over to the battery. All right, so here's my inline fuse. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook this up to the positive side here and then zip tie it to this uh, uh, wire harness right there. That way they're all together. So I got these crimp on. Uh, this is a quarter inch, you have to get a quarter inch um, wire terminal here, quarter inch hole for that for that uh, stud. All right, it's gonna be just like that. And then we're gonna take the, the crimping tool for a 12 gauge. And I'm gonna smash that. There you go. Once you got that on there, you know you got a sure uh, bite. All right, that looks like a good uh, bond. What we're gonna do now is crimp on this butt connector. Uh, to that positive red wire that goes through the uh, um, the firewall. I'm gonna crimp this on. We're gonna use the 12 gauge. Smash that. And then... We're gonna meet up with... We're gonna... Crimp it onto our inline fuse. Just like that. Just like that. So that should be a really good connection. And now we need the heat gun. And this has adhesive on the inside of the uh, uh, shrink wrap tubing, so you should see some of that adhesive uh, oozing out once you're done uh, shrinking it. What's important with these uh, crimp on connectors is that you seal it from the elements so you don't get uh, oxidation where the uh, crimp is. So that's why you get, that's why it has this adhesive uh, to seal it and keep it waterproof. Um, plastic um, 
conduit material and put the wire inside of it so that we can uh, pr protect it just like that all right looks like I almost got it in there you go so now I got my cable all wrapped up nice and neat probably add a piece of uh, electrical tape on the end there so it doesn't pop off and same thing on the other end So now, you're going to want to power off your car before you access your battery, before you uh, take off the nut on your battery stud. So make sure you turn off the car. Uh, are you sure you want to turn the power off? Yes, power off. Okay, so now your module is off. And then you're going to want to turn uh, or disconnect your DC to DC converter connection so you gotta it's right here in this uh, wire harness on the right side of the vehicle so remove this to remove this you just want to pull there you go once you remove that you disconnect your um, your uh, DC to DC uh, converter so now you're not uh, charging your 12 volt battery anymore so now you should be able to access this nut remove it and connect your inline fuse to that so here's my inline fuse I'm gonna connect it to that stud right there and uh, just be careful not to touch anything when you're removing that um, that nut right there. Don't uh, do not um, uh, do not uh, short short out your battery. So go grab a 10 millimeter socket, remove that, and then connect this quarter inch uh, round uh, terminal to that stud right there. All right, once you've connected everything, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna zip tie this to this wire harness and then my fuse, I'm gonna put a 10, in, 10 amp fuse right there. And that way it's all together on this wire harness. All right, so now this is your 12 gauge uh, positive uh, power wire comes down here you're gonna want to tuck this behind your carpet and down here and we're gonna shove it down the side here down there push it down and then we're gonna push it underneath all this area over to the other side on the driver's side uh, uh, underneath the center console over to the driver's side uh, um, uh, footwell area and that's and then we're gonna terminate that and hook it up to our 12 volt socket right over there that's what we're gonna do with that wire and uh, that's pretty much it over here. Uh, I think you can put everything back together on this side. Good ground. Uh, we're here on the uh, driver's side right here. And this is a perfect uh, ground, I believe. All 
right here, this bracket right here. I think I'm just gonna drill a hole right through there with a self topper. our ground right there. And what we're going to do is run the wire from here down along the bottom here and inside. And then once it's inside, then we'll have it pop out towards the top of the panel and into our um, 12 volt socket. All right, now you, can, now you take your uh, black wire, make sure it's 12 gauge. Strip the end of it. And now we're gonna put the uh, ter wire terminal on it. To do that, you grab your heat gun. Heat it up. We're gonna take this and screw this in here. good ground right there and you're gonna run this wire down and into the center console area and then it's gonna pop back out up here and over to your just like that so you, you want to terminate this and put a spade connector on this and that way you can connect it to your uh, your 12 volt socket. So now I'm going to show you how I installed this uh, triple uh, 12 volt socket that I, I bought. Actually this one is two 12 volt cigarette lighter sockets and one uh, double USB socket. Uh, one is a 2.1 amp and the other one is a 1 amp 5 volt um, USB socket. So it's up to you if you want to uh, get three of the uh, cigarette lighter sockets or uh, whatever combination you want to um, uh, purchase. It'll be in my uh, description, the links. Anyways, what I did here was I cut the back part out using a uh, uh, oscillating saw or a multi-tool um, so I cut this out cut it cut it 
and so that, that way I could have enough clearance for all the wires uh, all my jump uh, wires in the back here and uh, so this this is your your red and your black um, wires from your battery that that we just finished running and then I terminated it and I put some spade connectors here and connected it to it so um, what we're gonna do is figure out how we're gonna mount this here but um, the most important thing is we don't want to drill into our car and keep everything stock so um, I found a screw right at the bottom here that you can pull out it's a torque screw so I don't know if you can see that but it's right here so right right where this hole is it's like a rectangular hole uh, right behind it is a torque screw you can remove that screw and then put in whatever kind of uh, bracket or screw into that hole that way you have some kind of mechanical uh, fastener that'll hold our triple uh, 12 volt cigarette lighter socket all right so uh, oh the other important uh, part here is that there's a vent hole in the back here and uh, this vent hole is when you turn on your uh, your heater and uh, you want to heat up your feet it's gonna blow down uh, towards your feet so you want to make sure when you mount this underneath here is you want to mount it towards the front and not push it all the way towards the back and cover up those vent holes because you don't want uh, to to, uh, um, to hinder your uh, heater uh, getting to your um, to your feet so anyways uh, what I'm what, what you're gonna have to do is mount your bracket just like that towards the back of the uh, 12 volt socket triple socket if you mount it towards the front then this is gonna go this is gonna be way too far towards the back and it's gonna cover up those vent holes so what I did was I mounted it towards the the back right here and so what I did was um, this was just a bracket that I had in my garage or uh, my, an existing bracket that I had so I used this but basically what you want to do is Here's a bracket that I bought from Amazon. You'd probably be able to use this. So I just wanted to go ahead and uh, find a bracket that you, you'd be able to use, uh, that you'd be able to purchase from Amazon. So basically it would, it would look like that. So you're gonna want to drill a hole for mounting uh, your screw into. So I would, I would probably, Drill a hole just like this one. This hole is about 0.25, so a quarter inch in diameter. It's a quarter inch hole. I would I would drill a hole into this bracket right here, about a quarter inch, right there, and then from the edge it's about a quarter inch. So a quarter inch from the edge down, and so make a hole right there. That's a quarter inch. And then you'd be able to mount this on there. So, for example, so remove that, remove this uh, Torx Torx head screw. This is this takes a Torx. This is your OEM screw. This one is about 0.8 uh, or 0.75, so about three quarter inch in length, right? In order to mount a your angle um, here, you're going to need a longer screw. So what I did was I went to the hardware store and I purchased uh, a longer screw. So this has about the same diameter as this screw. So if you measure this screw, it is about 0.2 inches in diameter. I don't know if this is a, an, a number 8 screw. 
this could be a number eight or a number 10 screw. So this one, this screw is a uh, 0.187 compared to this one, 0.199. So it, it's very close. I don't know if this is a number eight or a number 10, but anyways, uh, check the diameter and make sure that they're the same. Now, uh, this was a three quarter inch in length. And then we're, we'll measure this one. This is the perfect length that you want. So this is uh, 1.46, so about one and a half inches in length. And uh, I just got a regular zinc um, plated screw. It's a, it's a uh, Phillips. So what we wanna do is mount this inside the hole. So this is the existing hole that was in here. You just wanna mount this in here. Again, you're going to be using that black colored uh, angle bracket that I included in, in, in the uh, description. So, but you got to drill your own hole. Once you have this in place, get it a little bit tight. Now, you're going to want to take this triple socket and figure out where you want it. So hold on to it use your fingers to hold on to it and where, wherever you want it which i think that that would be perfect right there and then what you want to do is take a piece of duct tape while the bracket is installed there hold it to where you want it to be and then you take a piece of duct tape and you tape it together and that way you hold it in place so I think it's perfect to just kind of line it up with this edge, this corner right here once you duct tape in place now your bracket is being held, your angle bracket is being held onto your, to your um, triple socket, right? So now, it's, now that it's holding it in place, you can remove the screw. Just like that All right so now this is what you what you what it looks like your brackets being held in place by your uh, duct tape and then now what you could do is take a drill bit and start drilling uh, a couple holes so I found out that the two best places to put my my, my screws are gonna be right here so drill a hole through here through the plastic through the metal bracket and it's and it should pop out on the other side here i think i actually ended up drilling it from this side metal first and then of course you want to have enough um me you, you want to have enough uh, clearance in between them so that your your screw heads don't crash into each other as well as your nuts because your uh your nuts are going to be on the in the outside i think and then i put my screw heads on the inside so it doesn't it, it doesn't touch anything any of my contacts over here so basically you take a couple um 832 i used 832 screws <clears throat> so drill a hole uh large enough for uh a couple 832 screws all right so i'm not sure what happened to my footage but it looks like i lost it uh but um now i'm recording this after the fact i've already uh installed everything uh, but as I was saying there are there's the bracket and then you could see the two 832 bolts sticking out they're half inch long um, I have 
a lock washer on the outside here with a nut uh, so on the inside I put a washer on the inside holding on to the plastic and then through the plastic through the metal bracket and then I have a lock washer on the other end on the other side of the bracket the metal bracket and then I have uh, uh, two um, nuts there holding it uh, both um, bolts in place so hopefully you can see that and then there's the uh, there's the screw over there uh, that's um, holding the bracket in place and uh, so I'm just gonna sh demonstrate what I did on another uh, um, I have a double so dual socket here that I have so anyways uh, so the brackets gonna go on this on this side over here once once you once you got your two screws uh, that coming out through here onto the bracket and then once everything's in, uh, set up in place uh, now you're gonna want to take some uh, some of this black um, uh, double-sided tape um, I, I purchased this stuff uh, for my uh, uh, underglow install it's a it's it's a really good double-sided tape because it's uh, it doesn't leave any residue if you remove it and it is uh, um, yeah it's removable basically and it won't leave any residue so I use this and I uh, put a piece across here I put a piece across the front and I put up a, a piece across the left side so make sure you line all this with with the double double stick tape and then you have your bracket sticking out there all you do is take this and then you stick it up underneath there the the mechanical bracket that's holding in place and then you have double stick tape across the, the top right top front and then also the, the 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 top left so um yeah that that uh metal bracket ensures that it'll never fall off so I think that looks pretty good. It's pretty pretty clean looking. Can't see anything. Almost looks like it's a uh, stock. All right. So that's pretty much it for the install. Um the two switches that I have installed here, uh, let me go ahead and show you, let me demonstrate. So this first switch on the left or in the middle is for when I turn that on it's for my ambient lighting there's my ambient lighting let me turn off my flashlight I got my dashboard center console and the back seats as well as the foot well both the driver side and the passenger side and then the uh, second switch on the right is for my uh, underglow so that's my underglow lighting So that's why I needed uh, some extra uh, 12 volt sockets. And you're gonna need it too if you wanna install this stuff. Anyways, uh, if this helped you in any way, uh, please do me a favor and uh, like my video, give me a thumbs up, and uh, subscribe if you want to uh, watch any of my other content that I'm that I'm going to be posting as far as all my other uh, modifications I've done with the car with my uh, Tesla Model Y all right thanks a lot for uh, stopping by my channel and, and watching my video I appreciate it
And uh, if you have any questions, uh, drop a comment in there, and I'll uh, uh, I try to read my comments and, uh, and and answer any questions that people have. All right, thanks a lot. I